Hey you guys, we're doing something different today. Today we're going to play around a little bit in ZBrush. I'm going to open up um, a project that I started a couple days ago. Um, I haven't really had a chance to come back to it. So we're not going to go in from the initial um, DynaMesh sculpt, but we are going to kind of jump in. Um, I got about 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes on this piece. Where did I put it? There it is. 30, 25 to 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more on this piece. Um, and, you know, I don't know how well the video card's going to handle this. It's not going to handle it too well, I can tell you right now. But we'll be able to get some stuff done. So you kind of see, it kind of looks like an old man. Um, what it's going to turn out to be, is I'll go ahead to the other, is going to be this. So... I wanted to do kind of a portrait sculpture um, from reference to kind of show that I have that capability. And it, it is something that, you know, I've, I've been doing for a little bit and I've really enjoyed ZBrush. ZBrush is one of those programs that is so intuitive and has such a great interface. Um, and basically it kind of teaches you as you use it. Now, of course, uh, in the context of new terminology and and understanding how things work, um, learning a new program is something that is always fun. Um, it's always fun. It's always one of those deals where you know you learn so much as you go along, and you can't really look at this process as something that is tedious. I think all learning processes are something to be enjoyed and and you guys know this about me I just like to learn um, what I'm doing right now is I'm taking um, some of the, the simple brushes that come with the program I know that a lot of people do custom brushes in ZBrush and I don't really do that just because you know I watch a lot of videos and I watch a lot of people create stuff and most of the time, a lot of them will indicate and tell you and say, don't get hung up in the brushes. You know, there's only a few brushes that I use whenever I do sculpts. And most of the time, I'll use the clay build-up brush. I'll use the uh, move tool, which is down here. I use the standard brush. And then there's another standard brush that kind of gives you creases. If, if some of you are coming to my channel and you're seeing me use ZBrush for the first time, this is the, basically the first time that I'm going to show um, this process on my channel. Hopefully, there'll be more as we, uh, as we move along. But what I wanted to show today was basically kind of the process that I did to come about on this particular uh, mesh. In ZBrush, a lot of the terminology that you guys are used to doesn't really apply in ZBrush. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and have a tutorial on the terminology in ZBrush, but I will say that it is something that took me quite a while to learn, and I'm still not, you know, 100% versed in everything. Um, I enjoy ZBrush for what it is. It's a tool that I use to play around with right now. In the future, will I endeavor to create more stuff yes and to create more stuff not only for the 3d environment but also use an illustration what's great about zbrush in general is like i said its ability and it's it has just an incredible intuitive interface you know learning the quick keys learning a lot of the um tools that are in here will benefit you enormously especially if you're a toy designer um, you know, within the past probably, I don't know how long, probably three years, I kind of changed my focus from just, you know, standard illustration and uh, product design to toy design and more hardline stuff. So, you know, I found myself in need of doing more three-dimensional projects. Um, what happens basically whenever you go into a project like this is you kind of already have to have a lot of the things in place in terms of um, knowing how to do certain things, if that makes sense. 
you know, how to create a face, how to draw a face, how to manipulate a face, how to determine what's right in the context of human beings and what makes it look right, skeletal structure, anatomy, and all that other stuff. So, that being said, this is kind of a, a caricature of George Washington. You know, I did an initial rough illustration. So he's got his jowls that come around. That's what this area is right here. The, the initial illustration I did was a while back. I did this kind of a, a really quick speed, um, speed sculpt, not sculpt, speed uh, sketch. And then I colored it in. And I've always wanted to do something 3D. So that's exactly what we're doing here today. Um, you see that I've got the move tool. And I think it froze on me. Oh, no, it didn't. Um, I've got the move tool. It may have frozen on me. Oh my gosh! Like I said, my video card is absolutely hideous. <laughs> my computer is so old. Um, yeah, it might have it might have died on me. Oops. Material. No. Um. So that being said, I'm gonna continue on. I gotta adjust the head. What's nice, too, is whenever you do a project like this, since he's going to have this huge amount of hair that's going to come around here and wrap around the back, I don't have to do the back of the head, which is really nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up putting you guys on time lapse. I'm not going to speak. And I'm just going to go in, and I'm going to just play around with it. I'm going to play around with it probably for the next 35 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, just to kind of give me a little bit better, um, better a feeling of where it needs to be. And again, since my computer isn't as quick as, as, say, some of your other computers, you know, I'll do what I can to make sure that everything works properly. But anyway, I encourage you guys, if you have the means, to get into ZBrush. I really recommend you to do it. Um, I kind of fell into it, meaning um, a, a buddy of mine had it, and he's like, hey, you want to try it out? Sure. And, and you know, I downloaded the... Um, the trial of it and I really liked it and I'm like man this is a great program of course at the time I was working on this monster machine that had incredible um, you know in incredible power and then I come home and I start working on mine and it's like nah you're we shouldn't be doing this this is gonna hurt us <laughs> so anyway um, enjoy the time lapse as I progress through my um, my learning process of learning of you know finding out exactly how to use this program learning the quick keys learning everything that it can do um, because it is an extremely powerful tool yeah, see I got some wrinkles here that I want to really bring out kind of bring around Anyway, extremely powerful tool. Now, if you look, I've got something called um, Symmetry on. And Symmetry is its pretty simple. You basically see this line over here where my cursor uh, crosses. And then whenever it crosses over here, everything I do on this side is going to happen on this side. Now, I will be turning uh, Symmetry off. There are different types of Symmetry. There's Radial Symmetry. Um, you know, there, there's, you know, Posable Symmetry. Um, just, you know, X, Y, and Z, different types of symmetry that you can utilize in this program. I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you guys that I'm an absolute whiz at ZBrush. I am not. I'm just here to show you kind of the process of exactly what I'm going to be doing. So anyway, my computer's kind of messing up, so. Ah, okay, good. So I'm going to put you guys on time lapse, and we'll see you um, whenever I start um, putting in all the details and stuff. But right now, it's very rough. And if you're interested in ZBrush, like I said, there is a ton of, um, yeah, that's kind of weird. It's kind of, kind of a stick out, kind of a lump in his chest. There's a ton of videos with a ton of guys and gals that have been using this program for years. I am not one of them. Um, I am a real novice uh, at the, well, I can't really say I'm novice because I know a lot about the program. I just haven't, um, you know, I haven't really stuck to it to get everything completed in terms of learning. I, I've just been, you know, you have to work. 
But anyway, enjoy the process, and we'll see you on the other side, guys. Thanks. Okay, I wanted to take a break really quick from the music and kind of give you an overview of exactly what is going on in the sculpt right now. So I've kind of fleshed out the um, main part of the face. I've inserted the eyes. And now I moved on to the hair. Um, I just took a simple sphere um, in Dynamesh mode and I went and imported it and appended it to this particular document and then I shaped it uh, according to um, the reference materials that I created. Um, <clears throat> as you're going to see as this particular illustration progresses along you can see some experimentation. Uh, experimentation with different brushes, um, different tools, different ways of doing similar things. Um, you know, uh, you know, in ZBrush, there's a lot of different ways you can do the same thing. Um, and I'm not, I'm not a a extremely fluent user of ZBrush. You know, I've got probably a few years under my belt in a very casual setting. Only until recently have I really started delving into the intricacies and workings of this particular program. Um, just as a necessity of my particular business, uh, toy design and, and and sculpting and stuff, and. Uh, you know, that's something that I, I viewed as being a necessity. Um, as I, you know, progress through this particular uh, piece, and you'll see here in just a second, because I'm going to get into the painting mode, that, um, that I, you know, I'm not 100% familiar with. However, I do have a working knowledge of it. And of course, the more you do something, the better you get at it, just like riding a bicycle. And also, you know, I put this program down for probably two years and I didn't really do anything with it. However, I was able to pick it up just because of its intuitive tools and, and the way that it, it really caters towards um, traditional artists. Um, of course, you have to know the vernacular. Of course, you have to know the terminology and, and the way things um, are constructed and, and, and different ways of doing things, um, you know, in the context of the program. As you see, I'm painting the mesh right now using the um, the uh, the painting feature, uh, which is really nice. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I really like using it. However, as I delved into it, um, because again, I don't have a huge knowledge with regards to this particular facet of the program, I started kind of getting frustrated, and you'll see here in a second, I kind of got frustrated with it um, because it didn't, it didn't have the blending of paint that I wanted. I wanted to be able to blend the paint and I'm sure that if I got deeper into it, it, you know, I'd see some different modes. So what you're going to see here in a second is I'm actually going to switch over to an alternate program. Yeah, you see right now I'm playing with lighting modes. I'm, I'm determining what kind of lighting I want, what kind of, um, what, you know, I'm going to light the mesh. And you see how it's going through its rendering uh, modes and different different properties in, BP, in, the, in the BPR rendering mode and stuff. 
and determining how detailed I wanted it to get and, and how what textures I wanted. And again, this is experimentation that one goes through when doesn't you know use the program that much. And boom, I switched programs over to Clip Studio Paint. Um, and I started using the watercolor uh, brushes and the blending modes and just really, um, you know, I exported the model uh, as a um, as a PSD document, which you can do that with, uh, you know, with alphas, uh, you know, the alpha channel, and you can you can singularly um, select uh, the image and really just start painting it, and and you can determine how detailed and you know you want to export it as what's great about the program is i still have the workability of the of the uh, the obj file and um you know if i wanted to if i wanted to 3d print this i could export it as an stl file and have it 3d printed um and uh just a, a great program but you know again i'm still you know plugging away putting in color and um you know, at this particular stage, you can pretty much do anything. I mean, that's what's great about the program. And also with Clip Studio Paint and being able to open up Photoshop brushes. So anyway, this is uh, George Washington, um, kind of in a caricature style. And I hope you guys like. And we'll see you next time. Bye.